Welcome to the Kitchen Sink University, where we share our knowledge with you, the viewers, hopefully to teach you something new and empower all of us to expand our abilities and strive to be more capable. We hope that you'll take what we show you, improve it, and share with others. I'm Eric Rosenblatt, and today, I'll show you how to use a 3D printer. I'm going to assume you've already followed the basic setup instructions for your printer and are pretty much ready to use it. We'll be going step by step, building something practical from scratch. The 3D printer I use is an extensively modified version of the Creality Ender 3 which at the time of this recording costs about 200 bucks. Pretty cheap. It's an entry level printer, but it's well made and quite capable. The thing we'll be making today is a light switch cover. That sounds really stupid, but recently I've been getting annoyed with the cover plate in my bathroom. It's way larger than the box it covers and it's all floppity and flexy. Yeah, I could, probably get something from the hardware store, but where's the fun in that? And I bet I could 3D print one for cheaper. So okay, let's get this party started. First you'll need to take off the cover plate. Just use a screwdriver and remove the two screws that hold it on. Wait, what? Flathead? Psh, who uses those anymore? Anyway, switch your bit and remove the screws. The cover will come right off. Now you'll want to measure everything you can. Here I'm using a digital micrometer, but you can use a ruler or whatever. Oh, hold on. That's an energized circuit and I'm holding a metal micrometer. Yeah, don't get too close to anything inside. Bad idea. Better yet, turn off the breaker to the circuit. That's what a smart person would do, but I'm ex an experienced professional idiot, so I'll, I'll just carry on. So, okay, measure all the key points and write them down. The length, the width, the distance from the box walls to the screw holes and the switch opening, and so forth. You're going to be recreating the cover plate, so collect as much data as you can without getting electrocuted. I might have a little bit in the filming of this. So once you have that, it's on to the design phase. Okay, so now that you've got your plan kind of drawn up, <clears throat> uh, what we will want to do is, let's open up some software here. What I use <clears throat> for designing uh, things that I'm gonna 3D print is a program called FreeCAD. So <clears throat> that's right here. And basically you just want to make a new, a new object and go to part design or actually, no, wait, we were in the right place. We want part. There is a difference. Um, so <clears throat> create a cube. That's going to be the foundation of what we're making here. Um, this will be our, switch plate. So obviously it's not the correct dimensions and we'll change it to 57. In this case, the width is the height just because of the direction we're looking at it. It doesn't really matter. Actually, you can kind of move things around and for the thickness, I'm going to say maybe six millimeters is good. So go with six and kind of zoom out and sort of look at this thing here. Okay. So there, there's our, the body of the switch plate. All right, so now we need to add some other objects. Um, I think I'll start with the hole for the switch itself. So I'm gonna add another cube and this, so what we're gonna do is cut the first object with the second object. So according to the measurements, it's 12 millimeters, 26. And the height doesn't matter because it's being used to cut out the other object. So we'll need to then move 
the position of this to somewhere else. Obviously, that is not where the hole needs to be. So <clears throat> here we go. Let's see. Uh, that's 57, 12, I don't know, maybe 22 and a half. Is that going to put it in the middle? That looks, that actually looks right in the middle. So it's based on the corner. And I, I now I can't remember if it's the top or the bottom corner in this case. Um, so let's guess as far as where it needs to be. It's going to be 39 maybe. Hey, all right. That looks good. So if we change views, you can see you got this thing and it's actually completely penetrating the other. All right, so, so that's how that's gonna work. So we'll just kind of, let's look at some different, so you can see it from the various sides. You can actually see it diagonally, but I'm gonna look at the top now. So what you do is you click the first object, then you uh, control click the second objects and then they're both selected. Use this tool right here, which is a cut, and boop, now you got a hole, all right? So it creates a new object called the cut, which actually you can pick apart and modify if you need to, um, but we don't need to because that looks good. <clears throat> now we need the holes for the screws. So I'll start with a cylinder. I'm look at this cylinder. This is two millimeters in radius. Uh, let's see, so I'm, I think I measured the hole being about five millimeters. So I'm going to give myself a little, little bit of space. So let's, let's change the radius to three, which will make a diameter of six. Okay. So now middle of that is going to be 20, 29. It looks pretty close. It might actually not quite be right. Um, so let me see here. Can't math today. Uh, 28 and a half. Oh, well, okay. So actually, that's pretty close. All right. <clears throat> so there we go. Now it's in the middle. Um, the Y location I measured the center of that as being about 22 for this side. All right. So that, that's looking good. And I'm going to create another. Actually, I'll just make a copy of it. Copy and paste. Okay. So now I got a second cylinder, and I'll just change the Y location to the other measurement that I made, which is 82 millimeters. Whoops, did I select? Okay, <clears throat> there we go. Now we got our holes in place. So we'll take this first cut, select the second one and cut the first out, and then we'll take the cut and select the second one and boom, now, okay, we got holes. So this is actually pretty much a, a cover plate, like as is, it would probably work just fine. Um, but I'm going to dress it up a little bit. And, you know, these corners are kind of problematic because the thing is that box that I'm dealing with is rounded. So, um, and, I, and I measured about 11 millimeters in diameter. So I'll just say it's 10. Um, and so <clears throat> I want to round this off. So I'll do is like control click all these edges here, which means I need to kind of like, there we go. There's the one that's not selected. So, okay. If we go back here, we're all selected and I'm going to take this tool, fill the edges and all these edges are selected. So since it was 10 millimeters, I will say a five millimeter radius and let's see if that makes it look nice. Yeah, it actually looks really nice. All right. So good. So then what I want to do is chamfer these edges, which will put a bevel on it. Like it'll kind of a little bit of a slope. So this is six millimeters. So I'm going to try four and see what happens. It actually isn't, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. So now we need to uh, chamfer these edges for the, the screw to be able to fit because it's otherwise the screw would sit on top of this. So we've got to create a recess for that to fit in. Um, so let's go with a three millimeter chamfer. That might actually be a little too much. 
try that again. So basically I'm just clicking on the edge of these and then control clicking on that one. And then chamfer that, go two. That looks more like what the screws look like. And I think I will also do that for this as well, just to kind of make it look nice. So we'll do the exact same thing here, two millimeters, give it a bit of, a little bit of style. So there's our, there's a switch cover plate and it's complete. And so, <clears throat> well, at least we hope it's complete. So you definitely want to keep track of what you're doing and save, uh, save this. So, okay, I'm going to select the entire thing, the object over here in the model view, and then uh, go to export. So we export it and I have a switch plate two. Oops, yeah, two. Switch plate two. Because I did kind of test this at one point in time, but this is a, an improved version. I'll save it. So that creates a model file that can then be used by other tools. In this case, we're going to use the tool that I use, Ultimaker Cura. All right. Um, so let's see here. I think, let's see here. There we go. Okay. There. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is uh, the tool that takes the design that we've got, this model we've created, and turns it into a series of instructions for the 3D printer to, to produce. Um, because the 3D printer needs pretty much a, a it, there, there's a sequence of movement commands, I think, uh, at least that's how I understand it, that it creates slices and instructs the printer. So it, it, every printer is a little bit different, so that's why we have to do this. Um, so the switch plate two, we'll load it up and you can see there it is. And that gives you an idea. This is the, the build plate surface and the whole entire volume that you can print in and so you can kind of eyeball this and see well does this actually look correct and you know it looks looks pretty good to me so i'm just going to hit for um actually wait make sure that everything's good layer height so you can change a few of these things to increase the uh strength and solidity of an object or or decrease it if you want to be a little more conservative in your use of materials there's also the layer height. Um, I don't know if I can move here. I'll move this knee out of the way there. Um, so it basically creates a, a higher quality print of something. So, uh, you know, if you want to do it fast and uh, rough, you could do it and it could be over here. Um, this is however many millimeters of uh, thickness it's going to lay down. And if, if you want something to be like very, very fine detail, so you do the a thinner layer height, but it takes a really long time. Um, so the infill is how is how much material is going to be on the inside of it. And so if you're worried about strength or something like that, you would um, you'd want it more infill than less. But uh, I think that I think 20% is probably good. And in this case, it generates support. If you have anything overhanging over a void, you have to do that so that it can print because it can't just print in open space. Uh, build plate adhesion essentially makes it so that things stick a little bit better and I've, I've experienced that that tends to work pretty well with my particular 3D printer. So we'll, we'll hit prepare and it's slicing it up and it says it's going to take an hour and 15 minutes and it's going to use about you know, you know a little over five meters and 16 grams which is very cheap uh, it's not really that much material actually. Um, so saved removable drive, it saves it. It's actually really quick and it auto ejects you know, when you click that. So there we go. Um, so I'm going to take it over to the 3d printer here. All right. With that out of the way, uh, just stick your SD card with the file we created into the printer and, uh, fire it up and start the print going. I'm using black filament here because it fits the color scheme of the bathroom. Maybe not so good for video clarity, but it's what I got and it'll, it'll still work. So there's a fairly lengthy warm up process and then the print will start. Uh, the, the beginning is really critical. So you'll need to watch carefully as that first layer is printed. 
In my experience, this is where all of the problems begin. So just check back from time to time, make sure everything's going well. It'll probably take a while to finish. Actually, quite a while. Yeah, eventually the print will be complete. Scrape your newly printed switch cover off the build plate and clean it up. At this point, you could file it, sand it, paint it, or whatever to make it nicer. In this case, I'm just going to use it as is. And as you can see, it fits nicely. Way more sturdy and sexy than the original. And it only took a few cents of filament and an afternoon to create. Hopefully, this encourages you to explore the world of 3D printing yourself. You can make almost anything you can imagine, and it's far more approachable than you'd think. R remember, try, don't be afraid to fail, learn, and teach. Class dismissed.